안녕하세요. 감사합니다. 감사합니다. Your Excellency Bishop uh, Peter Kang, the President of the Korean Bishop Conference, Bishop Enrique, your fathers, brothers and sisters, thank you very much for your warm welcome. But uh, Louis and myself uh, came straight from Incheon Airport just now, straight here. Although the weather for us was uh, very cold, but the hospitality is uh, very warm here. Uh, Korea has a very special place in the, in the lives of Myanmar. <clears throat> our youth uh, know more about Korea than our generation. Admire for the leadership in the economy, hard work, culture, <coughs> and the creativity. Korean churches' generous contribution to the development of various churches and people in Asia is very highly recommendable. As the <coughs> chairman of the Human Development uh, FABC, I owe you all a debt of uh, gratitude. Thank you for your Christian compassion, warmth, and the generous fellowship. The topic today is uh, solemn and very urgent. It is fitting that uh, we have listened to a very inspiring and poignant story of Jeju by Bishop Peter Kang. Blessed are the peacemaker, says Jesus. When nations uh, tried to settle scores through arrogant and self-defeating with weapons and uh, militaristic adventures, it is consoling to see the church reassert the duty as the conscience keeper and the peacemaker. It was Mahatma Gandhi, the great apostle of nonviolence in Asia, who said, an eye for an eye makes the whole world blind. Your effort at reconciliation is laudable. After listening to His Excellency Bishop Peter Kang, we feel your pain deeply. On behalf of the people of Asia, we wish to stand in solidarity with you today. This planet can be saved only by peace. And what do you do in the Jeju has a great reverberation in the world of Asia and the world. Blessed are the peacemakers, says our Lord. Blessed be your great efforts at promoting peace and understanding among people. The victory will be ours. Victory will be yours. Today we celebrate the feast of uh, St. Francis of Assisi, the patron saint of peace, environment and ecology. It is fitting that I speak today of peace in relation to true development. It is all the more fitting since it is related to development. The peace prayer attributed to him spells out its focus on the building a society based on the sharing and solidarity, giving and forgiving based on love, unity and justice. I'm happy to share with you some of the areas of concern related to peace and development in Asia. First of all, I want to congratulate Bishop Peter Kang and all the church leaders and laity for their peaceful and firm stand for people in the issue of Jeju. In keeping with the biblical precepts and the social teaching of the church, I wish and pray for true peace and amicable solution to this issue and any similar issue involving the rights of the vulnerable people. <clears throat> Pope Paul VI spoke that development is the other name of peace. We are not talking just about absence of war or violence, 
It is not a passive peace, but an active peace that needs to be totally involved in the struggles of the individual and society in its multi-dimensional development. We hear of many countries developing an economic growth based on industrial production and commerce. But we need to critically evaluate and see if there is holistic human development. It is high time to critically check as to who gains most from these developments and who are left out in this growth parameters. Development of few at the cost of many has become the norm of the day. This ultimately ends in exploitation, inequality, and in injustice. Development of many by conscious or unconscious exclusion of few is also not satisfactory as this again ends up with discrimination and lack of inclusive development. Biblical definition of a development and welfare is explained by the parable of the lost sheep. The true shepherd is not satisfied with the safety and security of most or many, that is 99 just once. But he is ready even to leave the 99 in the wilderness and pays fullest attention to the lost one so that all the 100 sheep will share welfare measures. The kingdom of God is for all. But this kingdom cares for those in need of primary attention. The true joy and satisfaction comes only when the special attention is given at the first place to the lost and the least. The parable of the vineyard, Matthew 20, speaks of the owner of the vineyard employing workers at 9 a.m., 12 a.m., 12 a.m., 12 p.m., 3 p.m., and 5 p.m. At 6 p.m., he starts paying to the last team of workers who worked only for one hour. He does not reduce the wage of the one who worked full day. He pays the wage starting with the last man first. He was the unwanted worker of the whole day. His wife and children are waiting for his return with some money for their food and survival. This last man's need is to be attended first. This is the compassion of God towards the neglected. It is a deliberate option for the poorest of the poor. This does not block in any way the welfare measures of others. It is a true model of holistic development needed for peace today. There is no peace without justice, and there is no peace without a human right. Peace is a right. Everyone is entitled to live in peace, harmony as a result of multidimensional well-being of human person and society. Hence, we need to spell out how this must be actualized by religious leaders, civil and political leaders, by the families, women, children, youth, and people at large. Today, we have to work for peace through rights-based approach to development and welfare. Peace versus war and violence. Another cause of concern for us when we speak of peace is the threat of war in the world as this takes away the entitlements that belong to the poor and the deprived. The world spends for basic education just six billion US dollars and for water and sanitation nine billion US dollars. 
It spans for military spending is 780 billion US dollars. This shows where our world's priority lies. Even in Myanmar, we speak our, our the general, Mutan Sui. Every year he would repeat the same sentence. For a country to develop, we must have the best weapons and the latest ammunition. That was his, his uh, theory and principle. We are living in a culture of threat and violence. Up to 1,000 people are killed on an average by small arms every day. So 500,000 people every year around the world. For every $1 spent in development assistance, $10 is spent on military budgets. There are roughly two bullets for each person on the planet. So we, there are two bullets for each one of us. And, uh, so the Catholic social teaching focuses on the disarmament and mutual dialogue in view of peace and development. The Bishop of Synods, the Synod of Bishops, spells out clearly that armed race is a threat to man's highest good, which is life. It makes poor people and individuals yet more miserable while making richer those already powerful. It creates a continuous danger of war. And in case of uh, nucleus arms, it threatens to destroy all life from the face of the earth. But Paul the Sixth said, when so many people are hungry, when so many families suffer from destitution, when so many remain steeped in ignorance, when so many schools, hospitals, and homes worthy of the name remain to be built, all public or private squandering of wealth, every exhausting armament race becomes an intolerable scandal. For Paul the Six on the development of people's progress, popular progress you. When countries were focusing on world wars, Popeyes the twelfth said, nothing is lost by peace. Everything is lost by war. The key themes of the Catholic social teaching speak of true peace and development in reference to the poor and the unwanted working for human dignity, focus on the social welfare and the community-based life. Three, special attention and option for the poor and the marginalized in the society. Four, playing a prophetic role against structural injustices. Five, working for economic justice. Six, standing for civil and political rights whenever such rights are violated. Seven, special concern for the social, cultural wealth of the indigenous peoples. Eight, exercising the stewardship of creation, especially by working on concrete issues like global warming and climate change. Nine, lobby with the social, political, and government leaders for good governance through special duty towards the neglected. Then, promotion and protection of women and children. Peace through development with entitlement. The principles of this, the social doctrines of the church focus on the right to development through the entitlements of all, especially the poor and the marginalized. This refers to social, economic, and cultural rights, as well as the civil, political rights of every person and society. When these areas are fulfilled, we can speak of uh, true development and true peace. 
Therefore, the prophetic stand of the church for peace leads one to denounce the evil forces like discrimination, exploitation, structural violence, social injustices, terrorism, and lack of concern for the nature and cosmos leading to global warming and climate change. Peace and development in the Asian context. The Office of Human Development of the Federation of Asia Bishop Conferences is happy about this great network of committed thinkers of this Asian Theology Forum. The masses of Asians continue to suffer injustice and human rights violations. Hence, in 1970 in Manila, FABC proclaimed openly, we are proud to be part of these masses. We acknowledge our failures. We resolve to be the church of the poor. We commit ourselves to an equitable distribution and socially responsible use of land and other source resources. And we decide to carry out a dialogue with the poor. This cry of the church in Asia for develop, true development in concrete refers to the poor and the marginalized, like the migrants, the indigenous people, slum dwellers, rural women and children, etc. Neglected of their entitlements to development, their basic right to, their basic right to life is also under risk as there is a neglect, neglect of the right to health and education, right to life and the dignity, right to peace and development. The Church in Asia has a perennial homework and mission to divert their whole hearted attention to these and the material neglect. The Synod of Bishops tells that our mission demands that we should courageously denounce injustice with charity, prudence, and firmness in sincere dialogue with all parties concerned. In this connection, I am proud and happy about the peaceful and non-violent campaign of the Korean Church on recent issues. So I congratulate Bishop Peter and all his collaborators for their stand for truth. In Asian context, while speaking of development, one cannot neglect that the church, by and large, is a rural church. Most of our members continue to stay in the rural areas with all their drawbacks, and a good number of them end up in towns as migrants, unemployed, and underemployed. In this context, the church has a special duty to carry forward the millennium development goals to achieve welfare of the lowliest. Church, like a true mother, has special concern for the weakest child and the top priority. She boldly cries aloud to every son and daughter to be freed from the clutches and temptations of power, name, institutionalism, etc., that keeps one away from such special focus on the weakest. The Asian Church has the following mission through her individual and collective commitment to pitch one stand amidst the marginalized, the oppressed, and the forgotten to join hands with all, both haves and haves not, to work for the welfare of all, knowing that this is possible only when it begins with the welfare of the least, the lost, and the last. To turn towards the downtrodden, the migrants, and indigenous peoples who are cut off from true development and welfare. To appeal to the governments, other religious leaders, and other social political leaders to work for the marginalized and the top priority. 
May the power of Jesus, the poor, who went about preaching a vibrant peace, bring human dignity, strengthen all the deliberations and proceedings of this important conference to con concretely respond to the weakest, the poorest, and the lowliest in the name of the true peace and development. Thank you. Thank you.